Thank you very much, and welcome to this year's transition ceremony. I'd like to start by making a few opening remarks. Transition is ultimately a time where we can both cast our gaze to the past year and at the same time look forward to the future. This year has been a tremendous year for student government, thanks in part to every single one of you in this room. And I, first of all, would just like to thank all of you for making this an absolutely fantastic year in student government. The next person I'd like to thank is someone who needs no introduction, Ms. Erica Zoyce. For planning every detail of this event from, I assume, the way the napkins are folded to the uh, to the, what are the, the programs, to ordering us a f food. I don't know if we needed an oatmeal bar, but apparently people disagree with me. Uh, so, Erica, thank you so much. This event is a fantastic swan song, and you will be dearly missed next year and in the future. <clears throat> I'd, I'd uh, now like to introduce, uh, as our keynote speaker, Dr. Neil Kerwin. Dr. Neil Kerwin is someone who clearly needs no introduction at this university. He's been here for so long that his relationship with this university actually predates his relationship with his wife. <laughs> he has, uh, first as a student, then a professor, then dean, then provost, then interim president, and then president, Dr. Kerwin's record of service to this university is something to which we all should aspire. So it is with uh, great pleasure, and I hope you'll join me in welcoming Dr. Neil Kerwin. I, uh, actually, my relationship with the university doesn't predate my relationship with my wife by that much, frankly. I mean, I, I met her here when I was a junior. Uh, but <laughs> more, more on that never, okay? <laughs> uh, first, let me, uh, I, I think the oatmeal bar is commendable. Especially so since I don't have to eat it myself, you know, so it's, but it's, it's, I think it's a great idea. Let me uh, direct my first set of comments to those that are leaving service, uh, because uh, I would imagine and I hope for you at this point what you feel uh, is a mix of satisfaction, I hope pride in what you accomplished, uh, perhaps a bit of relief <laughs> that you don't have to do it anymore. Uh, and uh, all of those things, if, if you walk to, away from the room today with those feelings, then I think uh, you can do so uh, with a sense of accomplishment. Uh, the experience, I hope, for all of you who are completing service was valuable. Uh, for those that are coming in, uh, I know that you do so having taken a bit of personal risk. Um, you have uh, probably in other earlier parts of your life taken on leadership positions. Uh, when you come to university, uh, that, that experience is bound to be more complex uh, and more difficult. The lessons of leadership and service that you should take away from this experience should last a lifetime. And I'll warn you in advance, if your colleagues haven't already, that some of those lessons are going to be difficult and some may even be unattractive. Uh, you may learn things about people you thought you knew well uh, that you wish you didn't know uh, in terms of their ability to meet obligations uh, and to keep their word. But by and large, uh, when you're said and done, uh, the things you'll take away from this, you should consider jewels. That'll last a lifetime. Most of you who are here this morning will step up to leadership and service for the rest of your lives. Uh, you've established a a personal commitment uh, that will persist unless somewhere along the line you convince yourself or other con others convince you uh, that you're not suited to the task uh, or the service is somehow not worthy of you. Uh, let me talk a little bit about what I think is ahead for you and then close with a commitment for me. You have to learn and it is a lifelong process to balance the obligations to your constituents and to the cause that you've taken up with your own attitudes and your own beliefs. It's what the political scientists call the, the dichotomy between trustee and delegate. Learning when to take 
lesson and direction from those who put you in the job uh, and learning when you need to turn your back on that advice and that input uh, and make your own decisions based on what you believe yourself because you feel uh, you are better informed, as you often will be, uh, and that your course of action is right. You're going to learn that good ideas and demands for change do not arrive in orderly fashion. They don't arrive in order of priority. They arrive essentially randomly. And the demands you will feel from people who feel very intensely about the things they believe uh, will be difficult to resist. You'll be expected to react immediately. You'll be asked to make decisions and perhaps commit resources immediately. And what I would tell you is that immediate reaction is often ill-advised. There are always two sides to a story. The other side may be stupid. It may be reprehensible. Uh, but nonetheless, it's a side. Uh, and most issues that you'll confront are complicated enough for you to take the time to learn as much about them as you can. It's always easy to tell people what they want to hear. Uh, it's often easy to divert those people to others uh, or with uh, some type of subterfuge that moves them from their issue to where you're more comfortable. That's not worthy of the position you're in. And it will not allow you to learn what you need to learn about your capacity to make difficult decisions under trying circumstances. The volume of debate is important. The persistence in debate is important, but they're not synonymous with wisdom. Uh, those who speak the loudest, those who speak most often, have a great deal to bring to debate, uh, but they are not infallible. Uh, and you've been put in a position where you need to judge the wisdom of their positions with those of a student body at large. People will both amaze and disappoint you you will both amaze and disappoint people. Uh, but you'll emerge from this, ex this experience better informed, more experienced, and more prepared for the next stage of leadership and service in your lives. I wish you very, very well. Uh, for my part, I pledge that I will do everything in my power to ensure that the lines of communication between this administration and the student body remain open that for every important decision made on this campus, there is a seat at the table for the students, and that I will do the best I can uh, during my years left in this job to ensure American University is a place we can all be proud of. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Kerwin. I think, yeah, it's time for food. Um, <laughs> so I, I know you're all ready to claw each other's eyes out to get to the uh, food, uh, but we're going to do this in an orderly fashion, meaning I get to go first. Um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, I, get actually, I actually get to go last. So um, thanks for that. Uh, Dr. Hanson, if you would like to join your table in heading up to the food first, you are more than welcome to do so. All right, everyone, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the fantastic food. Y'all are absolutely more than welcome to continue helping yourself to food throughout the award ceremony. Uh, and, sorry? Yeah. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> um, I'll, I'll get the award ceremony started off by presenting the Charlie Biscotto Senator of the Year Award. The Charlie Biscotto Senator of the Year Award was named after, you guessed it, Charlie Biscotto, a long-standing uh, member of uh, both the Student Confederation and the Student Government. And it is given to a, uh, a every year by the speaker to an undergraduate senator who uh, vigorously advocates on behalf of the student body. And I, I really do think that it is a testament to the triumphs of the seventh undergraduate senate that I had such a hard time picking uh, who I would give this award to. The recipient of this award last or of the, the award this year uh, represents everything that is best about the student government, about the student government, but specifically the undergraduate senate. 
The recipient of this award worked tirelessly to make the undergraduate senate and the student government more transparent, more receptive to students' ideas, and advocated tirelessly and fearlessly, uh, despite his freshman status, to advocate on behalf of the interests of the student body. Um, the, it is, uh, as the previous recipient of the Charlie Biscotto Senator of the Year. <laughs> As the previous recipient of the Charlie Biscotto Senator of the Year Award, it is my tremendous honor and pleasure uh, to present the Charlie Biscotto Senator of the Year Award to Mr. Rory Slatko. Moving on with the award ceremony, it is my pleasure to introduce someone who also needs no introduction, President McBride. So before we get to the awards, um, I just want to take this opportunity to say a few things. Um, at the beginning of this year, the executive board and I set out to, to do as much during this year as we could to make AU and AUSG as inclusive, accessible, and open as possible. Sorry for saying that so many times this year. Um, and while that vision was laid out by the four-person executive board, it was really implemented by dozens of individuals in all of our cabinets. And so I want to take uh, today, I want to take the opportunity that I have today to thank those in the president's cabinet and highlight some of their contributions to the university. So first, I'd like to thank Carmen Rios, Marielle Kirshen, Tyler Sedonis, Lauren Babb, Matt Kaback, Kevin Ralph, Charlene, Charlene Alonzo, Miguel Bondock, Jennifer Jones, Patricia Leslie, Terhas Clark, Marissa Keebler, Kaite Davidson, Jessica Lucivo, Phillips Granage, Kent Hebel, and Paula Gosar for all of their work this year. They were an incredible team. Between them, between them, we had several accomplishments, including gender-neutral housing, a new scholarship fund, uh, a new session, a comprehensive, comprehensive sexual assault session at Eagle Summit, incredible programming from 9-11 to take back the night, the vagina monologues and the breast bowl. So thank you again for everything you've done this year and for making this a wonderful experience for me. I'd also like to thank the Senate, every senator, uh, and the distinguished former speaker, of course, um, for your insights, your ideas, your help, your support, and yes, your disagreements. And thank you to the executive board. I couldn't have asked for a more stellar team to work with. Liz, Kevin, and Eric, working with you has been a privilege, and I know that we'll all remain friends for life. I learned so much from each of you, and I can't thank you enough for your friendship, your support, and your guidance. And that goes for everyone sitting in this room, students and administrators. This year was so fulfilling and so much fun, not just because of what we did, but because we did it together. We worked together laughed together, and grown and changed together. And I wouldn't exchange last year for anything. I know moving forward that this community will continue to strengthen. The incoming executive board, Emily, Pollock, Kevin, and Eric, the newish executive board, as I call them, <laughs> will lead this organization to new heights of accomplishment, cohesion, and effectiveness. There is honestly nothing more comforting knowing that you're leaving your position to someone more capable than yourself. So I say good luck to you, Emily, but you won't need it. Your talents, your intellect, your work ethic, and your personality will make next year the best yet. So thank you all. Now moving on to the awards. The first award is not actually an award, but it's a tradition that was started, I think, two or three years ago. Um, the presentation of the presidential cape <laughs> with Nate Bronstein's body paint on it. <laughs> kind of disgusting. To the incoming president, Emily Yu. You're just hanging on a pole. <laughs> Nate's the only one who wore it. Um, you guys don't have to make a bet. Um, moving on to the awards. So the first award is the Donald Bunis Best in Business Award. And it's given annually to one university office that exemplifies excellence in customer service. 
And this year we're giving it to a university office who responded to every request that we had, who aided in our advocacy efforts like no other office except for maybe student activities. This year's Donald Bunis Best in Business Award goes to Housing and Dining for their work on open gender power. Our next award is the Always an Eagle Award, presented by the Executive Board to an American University Administrator who works vigorously to enrich the quality of student life at American University. And while this person is no longer in the office that they were in when we worked with them, uh, their door was always open, they were always incredibly helpful, and frankly, did my job a lot. The Always an Eagle Award goes to Andrew Toslowski. Next award uh, is the Open Door Award, given annually to a university office or administrator who shows great dedication to the students of American University. This administration literally always has her door open, and all of the executive board felt that we could stop by her office at any time to get her help, her insights, and her support. I felt that I could go in there and literally say anything, share anything, and that she would be there for me. This year's Open Door Award goes to Dr. Karen Gerlach. Which is a wonderful name. Uh, the next award is to an individual who's not here, but it's the Faculty Member of the Year Award. And this goes to a faculty member who, for the last two and a half years, spent uh, a significant amount of their time. Uh, in addition to teaching, working on the new undergraduate regulations. So the Faculty Member of the Year Award goes to Professor Lee Riddick. So we can give her a round of applause. Even this is not here. The uh, Stu Award are a few awards that we give out representing service, tradition, and unity. And I have the honor of giving out the Unity Award. This year's it's an annual recognition of students, clubs, administrators, or organizations who best exemplify commitments to service, tradition, and unity at American University. Uh, the Unity Award goes to an administrator who, once again, always has their door open and has, has done so much to unify our campus through their incredible support of programming. This year's award goes to Mike Elmore. The next award is the President's Award, presented to a student government member or department that significantly contributed to the goals of each cabinet, moved the organization forward, and benefited the student population. This, year, this year's award goes to a department that I've become very close to, a department that's been an integral part of SG since its inception, uh, and a department that this year has put on incredible programming and achieved all of their advocacy goals. This year's President's Award goes to Women's Initiative. You're done with me after this next one. So the SG Veteran Recognition is awarded to any graduating member who has been involved throughout their AU college experience with AU student government. The first individual is Erica Zoys. Next individual is Greg Martin. Is Greg here? All right, put a round of applause for Greg. Another individual who is halfway around the world is Riley Fujisaki. Another individual who's not here is Nate Bronstein, of course. Uh, another individual is Carol Foster. There she is. And the final award goes to someone who's, I think, in California right now, Carmen Rios. 
So thank you all for a wonderful year. Um, <laughs> Oh, Anthony Dunham, of course. There's no award here for some reason. Anthony Dunham, I'm sorry. Here, Anthony Dunham. Sorry. Thank you. Um, well, on that note, <laughs> um, I'd like to introduce my best friend since sixth grade, the outgoing vice president, Liz Richards. Uh, thank you. Well, I didn't prepare very much because I knew I was just going to be doing a lot of thank yous. Um, but like uh, President McBride, this has been an incredible year and I've learned so much. Um, it's it's really crazy to think about, but the I never thought I would have so many experiences jam-packed into one year. So it's been great. Um, I'd first like to thank my cabinet. You guys are sitting over here and you've been fabulous. I'm so proud of all of you. Uh, Alex Kreger, Ira Grylak, Alex Lero. Um, I see Julia Reinstein over here. She was the events deputy. They've all been fantastic. They've brought programming to a whole new level, and most of them are staying on next year. So I, I'm so happy. Um, I'd like to thank the e-board. I, I love you all, and I don't want to go too deep into it because then I'll just cry or something. But um, I also wanted to thank the administrators because without you guys, this really wouldn't be possible. And I really appreciate it. Like Karen, I'm, Karen during uh, Clinton and then followed by Founders Day, ridiculous craziness, and you were always there for us. And thank you so much. <laughs> um, Dr. Awe, Mike Elmore, Chris Moody, Karen Gerlach, or, uh, Karen Gerlach, Gail Hansen, President Kerwin, everyone, thank you so much. You guys have been great. And this program really means a lot to students. Um, I, I felt like I've grown so much this year, and none of that would have been possible without your help. So thank you so much. Right. Okay, now I'm giving out my awards. Um, the first award, is the Jen Myers Woman of the Year Award. Uh, this is given to one woman each year who has made a significant contribution to the campus community in the area of female empowerment. This year's award goes to Courtney Brooks. Uh, I don't think she's here right now, but Courtney Brooks. The next award um, is the STU Tradition Award. Um, this is an annual recognition to students, clubs, or organizations who best exemplify commitments to service, tradition, and unity at uh, American University. The Tradition Award um, is someone that I met in the process of planning Founders Day. I really wanted it to be focused on tradition, and this person really helped me, gave me ideas, um, and she's not here right now, but Susan Mecklerath, the university archivist, has been fabulous. And, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy we got to foster a relationship with her. And, She's been great. Um, so that, that one. The vice president's where this person isn't here either, but this is someone that um, has been here for four years and uh, has you know, never been about a title and has always just done the job because he loved it. Um, Greg Martin for KPU. Um, <laughs> the Screaming Eagle Spirit Award. This is an award presented to the American University organization or individual that works vigorously to create a sense of community and pride at American University. Uh, that award goes to Kevin Ralph. He's not here either. <laughs> Kevin has, you know, he's been on the pet band. He's been really a, str a strong student, and uh, he's worked in my cabinet and uh, McBride's cabinet, so it's great to have him. And then the last one is the, the only person that's here right now, uh, the Rookie of the Year Award is presented each year to one person who has excelled in his or her year of involvement. Uh, this person stepped in at the last minute, um, at the beginning of the year, and just took, took the reins, and I, I never had to worry about that department again, and that's Alex Kreger for keeping it. I think that's it for me. So the next uh, e-board member that will be presenting is my dear friend and the secretary, Kevin Sutherland. Do 
always great when the secretary gets to go before the comptroller. <laughs> I'm going to save all my remarks from my speech later, um, so I'll just get to the awards. Uh, the first award is for the program of the year, uh, traditionally given to a campus group or organization uh, that has performed exemplary programming this year. And I think uh, this one certainly deserves it this year. This has set the model. I think we're going to duplicate this again next year and hopefully in years to come. Uh, but the event we had with Bill Clinton uh, a few months ago, uh, you know, 3,000 students came out. Uh, we tried to do programming that uh, really brings out the AU community. Uh, you know, the most students on campus will enjoy it, and I think that event certainly did it. So it goes to uh, KPU for the Bill Clinton event. Uh, the second award is the Stu Award, and this goes to a uh, student club or organization uh, that exemplifies service, tradition, and unity. And I think the, uh, the person that's receiving this award certainly deserves it. Uh, held many titles this year. I think the uh, best one is an unofficial title, probably every man of the student government. Um, and this award goes to my roommate, uh, Paula Kosar. <laughs> And uh, finally, my personal favorite, the Secretary's Award. Uh, <laughs> this goes to a member or department in the student government. Uh, that has contributed significantly to publicity and outreach uh, in the student government. And uh, I think this year it goes to a very deserving person. Uh, each and every one of you has an example of their work uh, on your table right now. Uh, Ashley Percy, the design director, who's unfortunately not here right now, um, but she was just excellent this year in terms of getting posters and stuff, and our publicity efforts would not have been half of what they were uh, without her excellent work. Uh, with that, I'll introduce the comptroller, Eric Reed. So back to follow. Well, <laughs> I I will have the opportunity to give a fantastic speech, but I do just want to give a, a, a couple of thank yous. Uh, I basically I want to want to thank everybody who showed up today. Uh, I have to give a huge. Uh, huge, huge thanks to the Office of Student Activities, Karen, Chandra. I know any of our, well, 30 and some budget departments uh, can certainly be a pain to deal with on any given any given day. And I know dealing with me certainly is, you know, uh, no pretty prize in itself, but I, I wanted to thank you so, much, so very much. Uh, so with that, we'll move on to the presentation of awards, uh, beginning with the uh, Phenomenal Fundraising Award. Uh, this award is given out each year to a student organization that does a fantastic job raising funds for a charitable cause. And although a representative isn't here today, uh, the phenomenal fundraising award for this year will go to Colleges Against Cancer. Uh, the next award I have the privilege of giving out is the Stu Service Award. Um, this year is really kind of a no-brainer. Um, it goes to someone who has spent four years in the student government, uh, has really taken uh, one of SG's newest departments and has really run with it. Uh, and she was there even from its beginning and she's well, still there today. Uh, I just have to thank Carol Foster for all of her incredible work for the bike running program. The next award we have going out this afternoon is the Comp Chores Award. And not gonna lie, this was a little bit of a tough choice because myself, my cat, did a pretty bang up job this year. Um, <laughs> but one department that stood out in particular this year, um, well, I mean, they, they probably have one of the most difficult jobs in the entirety of the student government. Um, planning concerts with a set budget is no easy feat. Uh, it's been difficult for previous student union board directors, but not this year. Uh, this year's Comptroller Award goes out to Mr. Ira Gralick for doing a fantastic job managing this event. The Overcoming Adversity Award uh, this year is going out to a person of student government 
who took a job kind of on a whim, uh, wasn't entirely sure what she was getting herself into, uh, but there was twists and turns along the way, uh, but thankfully she has uh, made this department uh, probably one of the best functioning in the student government. So this year's Overcoming Adversity Award goes to uh, Miss Jackie Langer, Director of Auto. Ah, yes, the Best Bang for Your Buck Award. <laughs> this year, pretty much a toss-up because all of our departments have done uh, a really fantastic job with uh, the budgets that they've had this year. Um, but one department shown rose above the others, uh, I should say. And this year, uh, the, the, the clear choice was the Kennedy, Kennedy Political Union packing in students into Bender, thousands of students into Bender for Clinton, Jana Napolitano. Uh, and Robert Gibbs, for goodness sake, and my personal favorite, John Huntsman, all right? <laughs> Very thankful I had the opportunity to meet him. So this year, John, thank you for watching this video. And the final award of the day is the Riley Fujisaki Key of Distinction Award. Um, this award was renamed this year, uh, thankfully, with the, resolu res the resolution passed by the Undergraduate Senate, uh, to be renamed after probably one of my best friends here at AU, probably, the, probably one of the most hardworking, honest, and caring men that I've had the opportunity to know here at AU, Mr. Riley Fujisaki. And al although he graduated uh, this past December, you know, Still a fantastic friend, and you know it's it's fitting for us to name this two-time recipient of the award in his honor. Um, this year it goes out to well, probably my best friend here today. Uh, it's someone who has been there for me through difficult turns. Who's been there for me through well, any kind of turn in the SG, any 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 well horrible curveball I could have had this year. Uh, but she has really shown. Uh, an incredible dedication to this organization. Uh, you know, so it's this year I'm going to give it to uh, Ms. Erica Zoyce, a good friend and clearly deserving of this award. And that now ends the awards portion, but now it's time to get on with business. So it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Al Robinson, acting speaker of the Undergraduate Senate. Thank you, Mr. Comptroller. My friends, my colleagues, and incoming executives, I hereby call this transition to order. Good morning. It is now my great privilege to begin the duties as prescribed to me by the Constitution as chairman of this of the Judicial Board to begin the swearing in of the 2012-2013 executives. At this time, I will now swear in the incoming comptroller and outgoing comptroller of the student government, <laughs> Mr. Eric D. W. Reed. I, I, Eric D. W. Reed, <laughs> do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will diligently and faithfully. That I will diligently and faithfully execute the duties and responsibilities. Execute the duties and responsibilities of the office of comptroller of the student government. Of the office of comptroller of the student government. And that I will abide by the governing documents. And I will abide by the governing documents of the student government. Of the student government. And that I will work to my fullest ability. I will work to my fullest abilities to promote the interests and welfare. To promote the interests and welfare of the students of American University. The students of American University. Very much. I present to you the comptroller of the student government, Mr. Here. Well, everybody liked me so much, you just can't get rid of me. So it's a pleasure to be here for another year. Um, I spent a lot of time trying to write a speech. A lot, a lot of time trying to write a speech. And I thought about, well, how can I write a speech? Am I going to write it down on paper so that way I have something to read off of, so that way I could keep myself focused? Couldn't exactly do that. Uh, I thought to myself, do I want to pull a Bill Clinton? Um, before he gave a speech in Bender, I had had the opportunity to see his note card. He, that man spoke for an hour, but had three bullet points on a three by five. I can't do that. 
so I thought to myself, well, I mean, <laughs> just got to get up there and wing it. And I was, I was pretty nervous. This morning before I left my apartment, I uh, watched a, a video of uh, Vice President Joe Biden uh, speaking off the cuff. And it made me nervous, to be frank with you, because I was afraid I was going to put my foot in my mouth. But uh, got, myself, got myself relaxed. I, I knew McBride was going to hate that joke, but I had to sneak in an anti, anti-Delaware comment here somewhere. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, this year, we, we're all here because it's called transition. Well, I hate that word. This isn't a transition, and no, I don't mean just because Kevin and I will be sticking around for next year. It, it's not a transition, because a transition implies that something is ending and something new is beginning. And while that may certainly be true for new students here and new leadership roles, we're not transitioning in purpose. The, the goals, the things that we've accomplished this year won't transition. Open gender housing is not a transition. It is something that students will be able to reap rewards from for years to come. The SG scholarship, which has been reactivated after a little bit of dormancy, will not, there's no transition to that because it will impact students year after year after year. And the same thing is true of the student government. There's no transition for us because our work never stops. It doesn't. And I, what, what I have to say is this year, the title of my speech was going to be, this is the best year ever. It is. Now, don't let me lie to you. This year has been the best year in the history of the student government in terms of advocacy, in terms of programming, in terms of reaching out and touching students' lives. But it's going to get better. We have to do better. The student body demands that we do better by them. This next year is, is going to, well, it, it's one of the most important years, I guess, in terms of undergraduate students coming up, and by that I mean the university budget cycle. We'll have an opportunity to have a student representative on the university budget committee. And it will be our most important duty to fight for undergraduate students. Those who will be here and will be impacted by fiscal years 14 and 15, and those who, who even haven't, haven't even thought of applying yet. So, in closing, what I will say is this year, has been great. I have made some great relationships this year. I'm thankful to have had uh, a fantastic family here at AU, a fantastic set of friends, a fantastic e-board, a fantastic staff, a fantastic organization to work with. Um, but this isn't it. This isn't a transition because our work never stops. Our, our work doesn't begin on May 1st and end on April 30th. Every day of the year, we have to work to make sure that undergraduate student lives are as best as they possibly can be here at AU. So I will pledge nothing, nothing less uh, than my hardest efforts next year. And I look forward to working with the new e-board and all of the new directors for next year. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. At this time, I will swear to the Secretary of the Student Government, both incoming and outgoing, Mr. Kevin Sutherland. I, I, Kevin Sutherland, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will diligently and faithfully, that I will diligently and faithfully execute the duties and responsibilities, execute the duties and responsibilities of the Office of Secretary of the Student Government, of the Office of Secretary of the Student Government, and that I will abide by the governing documents, and that I will abide by the governing documents of the student government, of the student government, and that I will work to my fullest abilities, and that I will work to my the fullest of my ability to promote the interests and welfare, <laughs> to promote the interests and welfare of the students of American University, of the students of American University. I present the Secretary of the Student Government, Mr. Kevin. Thank you so much, Kevin. Well, it's obvious to me uh, after coming up after the Comptroller uh, that me and Eric contemplated very similar uh, thoughts on transition. Uh, you know, a lot of jokes have been made over the last month as to what kind of transitioning I'm going to be doing, and it's true I'm not transitioning as many as as, uh, as much as some of the other uh, members of the e-board uh, this time of year. Um, but you know, I decided this morning that this is really a time for reflection. Uh, you know, a year ago I was up here uh, being sworn in for the first time, and uh, fairly new to the organization, very nervous. Um, I've written my speech, was very nervous to give it, um, 
and was nervous about what I was getting into. I wasn't really sure how to do some things and was definitely uh, aware that I was going to be relying on some of the other members of student government uh, to find my way. Um, and in addition to that, even uh, Andrew and Karen in student activities as well. Um, so it, it's been an incredible year. Uh, coming into this over the summer, um, I was surprised uh, how, how well the e-board meshed together. Uh, we really came with, this, with a very similar vision, um, just kind of spontaneously. Um, I remember seeing over the summer, uh, as McBride got down to business working on advocacy, uh, how, how good of a fit uh, for president he was. He was. And, uh, uh, and in addition to that, vice president, I mean, uh, I was in the uh, KPU the year before, and I mean, this year they've outdone even that year, and I thought that was a pretty incredible year. Um, and then against all odds, uh, me and Eric became close friends this last, last year. Uh, tra transition last year, Eric swore me in, and a couple weeks later I swore him in his comptroller, uh, which was incredibly awkward back then. Uh, but, but we're best friends now, and I mean, uh, at the beginning of the fall, uh, meeting with my new cabinet, uh, that was incredible. They all really uh, came to the plate, stepped up, uh, and I was surprised by that. And it was great to work with them. Uh, this year would not have been as successful without them. Uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, the new cabinet that I'm put, I've put together for the, ne the next year. Uh, and I think it's going to be a great year. I'm looking forward to working with everyone again. Thank you. At this time, I will swear in the incoming 2012-2013 Vice President of Student Government, Mr. Paul Gosa. I, Pollock Gosar. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will diligently and faithfully. That I will diligently and faithfully. Execute the duties and responsibilities. Execute the duties and responsibilities. Of the office of Vice President of the Student Government. Of the office of the Vice President of the Student Government. And I will work to my fullest abilities. And I will work to the fullest of, to my fullest abilities. To promote the interest and welfare. To promote the interests and welfare. Of the students of American University. Of the students of American University. The Vice President of the Student Government, Mr. Pollock Gosar. Thank you, for, uh, for all of you. really appreciate it. Um, so I, unlike my previous two fellow executive board, board members, did prepare a speech. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I, was, I was a little more, I guess a little more nervous, uh, being my first time and all. Um, but I want to start by thanking everyone for being here to celebrate with us. Um, I really appreciate all the support all of you have given me over the past couple of years. And I really do appreciate the support that, that you guys are going to give me, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, <laughs> over the next year. Um, I also really want to thank all my friends here um, for introducing me to the crazy world that is student government. Um, I really wouldn't be here without the help of, you know, McBride, Brett, Kevin, Eric, Erica, Chelsea, Liz, um, and really tons of other people here who I couldn't remember last time while writing this. Um, <laughs> these people have honestly become some of my best friends, and the hard work and time they spent in the SG offices last year showed how dedicated they truly are uh, to student government. This past year has been one of the best years student government has seen ever. McBride and his cabinet were able to accomplish or start work on almost every, every advocacy goal they set, including gender neutral housing, establishing a civic engagement scholarship, establish, and establishing sexual assault prevention for all, sexual assault prevention training for all incoming freshmen. In addition to, to fixing the website and revamping the jobs board, Kevin and his cabinet were able to, to create a unified brand so that students all around campus knew exactly what student government was doing. Eric and his cabinet led the way to one of the best financial years we've had in years, making sure, all while making sure that the student government became tons more inclusive with, by mandating safe space training. And it didn't stop there. Liz and the vice president's cabinet were no different. KPU director Alex Kreger raised the bar higher than it had ever been before with speakers like Robert Gibbs, Angela Davis, and of course, President Bill Clinton. The Student Union Board with director Ira Grylak brought us amazing concerts like We the Kings, John Legend, and last night, Modest Yahoo, uh, which was an amazing concert for those of you that didn't, weren't able to make it. In addition to that, they managed to put on another great Artemis Ward Week, a spring fling, and with the help, with the help of Alex Lero, Julia Reinstein, and AJ Custard. There were, small, there were also some great smaller events like Final Perk, the Halloween events, and of course, a little thing that we like to call Founders Day which turned out not to be so small. More than 800 students were able to have an amazing time in one of the most amazing venues in Washington, thanks to the hard work of Liz and her founders team. 
Part of me thinks that after this year, we really should just dissolve the student government and start end here. But I guess uh, I guess we've already started that process. <laughs> seriousness though, um, I'm not sure we're going to top this past year, um, but I can guarantee you that we are going to work our hardest. I want to thank everyone again for all the help they've given me, and I'm really looking forward to working with all of you next year to make, to make it the best it can be. Thank you. It is now my great privilege and honor to swear in the 2012-2013 President of the American University Student Government, Ms. Emily Yu. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the 2012-2013 President of the American Uni University Student Government, Ms. Emily Yu. saying thanks to everyone who served in student government this year, to Bride and the rest of the administration and everyone in the cabinet who did such a fantastic job in advocacy and programming and everything in between. Um, but I want to say a warm welcome and thank you to our incoming cabinet members. Um, all of my cabinet is kind of situated over there, so everyone wave and say hi. <laughs> yeah, so that's really something I'm hoping to do this year is bring in more people who might not have been involved in I know we have some really dedicated members who have been here for as long as they've been in AU, and we have some people who are just joining student government. So something that I really want to do is to continue bringing more students in so they can feel the great sense of community and family that we have here. And I don't know, you know, I feel like everything has been said before. Um, it's been a great year, but hopefully next year we can make it better. I know everyone here is going to give their 110% to make it that way. So. That's all I have to say, and enjoy the rest of the transition ceremony, and look forward to working harder in the summer and in the coming fall with you guys, so. All right, well that brings us to the end, basically. Uh, I mean, uh, you all are more than welcome to stay and enjoy the food. There's still food and it's still hot. Um, so y'all are more than welcome to uh, have as much as you want. Uh, but in conclusion, I'll just say, sorry. Uh, I'll simply say um, thank uh, thank everyone for coming. It's been a fantastic year. It's been a fantastic fantastic morning. Thank you, Erica, for uh, everything that you do. Do we really need to call it out of? Do we need to gal it out of order? I mean, at this point, like it's awkward enough. Just say it. Uh, oh, uh, thank you, Chairman Dunn, of course, absolutely, and thank, thank you. You are still probably the only person who can say that they have that thing memorized frontwards and backwards. Um, you could probably say it backwards, actually, if we did ask you to, so thank you so much for uh, your dedication, your service, and um, being willing to swear these four schmucks in, so. Uh, um, so we'll, we'll bring everything to a close this morning. Um, I'll, just a few short reminders. The Committee on Rules and Privileges will meet at 12.30 in MGC 247 to confirm all of the new directors. Uh, and then the Undergraduate Senate will meet at 2.30 in Ward 6 to confirm all of the new directors and deal with its usual business. Um, and thank you so much for um, being here this morning, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.